Now, it doesn't matter what level or ability of swimmer you are, at some point, you will ask yourself the question, do I need a swim coach? You may have seen fellow swimmers or triathletes using them, and you will almost certainly see all professionals using them. So, should you? Well, let's discuss. Okay, first off, swimming is incredibly technical. Unlike many other sports, you can't just use brute force and strength to swim better or faster. You need to be smooth and efficient in the water, along with well-timed and placed application of force. All sounds pretty fancy and sounds like you would need a swimming coach, but it's also possible without. So I'm gonna run you through the benefits of having a coach on the pool deck, the benefits of not, when you might choose one over the other, and how to get the most out of both. So, if you're brand new to swimming or relatively inexperienced, then this would be my suggested course of action. Get yourself in the water, in your own time, without a coach, just get the hang of it. Build your confidence up without the feeling like someone is there watching over you all the time. Now, depending on your ability, you don't even necessarily have to swim when you first get in. Just paddle around and get a feel for it and build that confidence up. And once you feel relaxed, this is where you have a choice. Coach or continue with no coach. Now, as I have said, swimming is incredibly technical. For that reason, I would personally recommend getting someone in at this point to look over your stroke and help you from the pool deck. And the problem is, it's very easy to learn incorrect technique early on. But unfortunately, it's far from easy to unlearn that bad technique. So start out on the right path if you can. Now, if you're being taught the correct technique from the start, it stands you in very good stead. Now, let's be frank here, we're not talking one session and you're good to go. It will take a number of coach sessions until you really feel like you're progressing and understand everything. But if you do that, you can be quite flexible with your approach from there on. Now you could, of course, go it alone for a few weeks just to practice what you've learned in your own time. Or maybe have a coach session, just less frequently, maybe once every couple or few weeks. Or perhaps just continue as you are if it's going that well with a coach there each time. Now that's kind of obviously the ideal scenario, but unfortunately, this isn't where most of us lie is it? Most of us have learned incorrect technique and now we're scratching our heads as to how we fix this. The problem with swimming is that it's incredibly difficult to see what we're doing. Now, you know there might necessarily be something wrong with your stroke, otherwise you'd be swimming faster, but what on earth is it? In fact, you've likely also had someone tell you something about your stroke before and it's been complete news to you that you do that funny thing, for instance, with your arm. Now, you can probably see where I'm going with this. Yeah, a coach is really good for this. They will be able to identify what is going on with your stroke and relay it to you, and hopefully tell you how and what you need to do to fix it. Now, depending on the kind of squad or coach you've signed up to, they may also be providing you with coach training sessions, good quality focus sessions, which is great fun. But this is also where the pros and cons to a coach come in. They can be overzealous with critiquing your stroke to the point that they overwhelm you with information. Your hand is crossing the center line, you're not rotating enough, don't lift your head so much to breathe, kick from the hips. There is no way you can focus on all of that at once. And then to have the coach following you alongside the pool for an entire session, watching your every move, will just leave you shattered and probably very confused by the end of it all. Of course, not all coaches are like this. The better coaches will be able to identify the root cause before perhaps addressing the subsequent issues. Some may even do some video analysis with you, which I would fully recommend to any swimmer if they get the opportunity to do that because it is invaluable. Now the alternative of course is to work through it yourself in your own time. Whilst you obviously lack the expertise to give you advice, you can take your time, work at it on your own, at your own pace, and just focus on one thing at a time. And there's a lot to be said for that, to be honest. Now, however, 
you're going to need to do some research. Obviously, welcome to our videos here at GTN if you haven't discovered them already, and be a little creative. So here's my little list of things to do if you're going alone. Now, before you even consider ripping your stroke apart, start working on that elusive feel for the water. I know it sounds like a mythical jargon term, but it is actually a thing. If you compare yourself to an Olympic swimmer that swum their entire life, they will have a much better feel for the water. They will be able to make micro adjustments to the hands and movements and the stroke so that they catch the water better and produce more power. Of course, we can't fix the fact that you may not have swum your entire life or the fact that you're not an Olympic swimmer, but we can fast track this feel for the water a little bit. Now my go-to for this are skull drills. Front skull particularly and a little bit of mid skull without using our legs we will be able to use these small movements of our hands and arms to move us forward. It teaches us to get a purchase of the water, to feel the water. For more detail on these, of course, though, do check out our drill and skull videos on the channel so you can really thoroughly go through that in your own time. And then it's time to run through the fundamentals of the stroke, almost like having your car MOT'd or serviced. Run through each part and phase of the stroke. This is where, of course, you will need to do your research and scrub up on some swimming knowledge. And to help you with this, we do have the perfect video, How to Swim Freestyle Properly. And I'll pop the link for that in the description below. And that should steer you through this all very well. Now in short, your stroke should be symmetrical. You also wanna push your body through the smallest space possible. In other words, you don't want your legs sinking and increasing that area. And you want to apply force behind you so that you go forward. So bear that in mind with how you track your hands. And it's pretty simple, right? Now, if you didn't already know what you need to work on on your stroke, hopefully the last step will have helped you identify that. If not, well, it's time to call in the help of a friend or training buddy. As I said earlier, it can be really hard to see and feel exactly what you are doing. So having someone watch you can be really useful. Better, get them to film you if you're allowed to, obviously, in the pool that you're using. Now figure out what your root causes are and aim to address that. Now, how you go about addressing technical issues is really important too. Just swimming up and down, trying to correct your stroke will help you to a degree, but only get you so far. You want to do focus drills that break the stroke down and focus on a particular area and quite often overemphasize that movement to really help you reinforce the technique. Again, we have loads of videos that we will suggest different drills for different skills, so go check those out. Now, that doesn't mean you just do technique work all the time now. It's still really important that you continue with your regular swimming, but drop some drill and technique work in. Now, I often suggest just starting a session and finishing a session with a small bout of drill work, with the aim to continue with some of that good technique through the main swim session. You can also do a dedicated technique session once a week or perhaps every other week. And the important thing though is to remember is that this won't all happen overnight. Fixing technique can take weeks, sometimes months or years. And sometimes you may even feel like you're taking a step backwards before hopefully then taking two forwards. I guess the main thing to consider when deciding whether to go it alone or with a coach is what kind of student or athlete you are. Do you like to study, understand and work through things in your own time? Or do you just want someone to tell you what you need to do? Perhaps you like a blend of the two and that's fine. To be honest, that is me. I like to do a bit of both. Now, I hope today's video has helped, of course, would love to carry on helping you, so do get involved in the comment section down below if you have any specific questions. Uh, we also have our Coaches Corners, which come out each Monday, where you can pop in any Coaches Corners question, use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner, and ask us specific swim questions. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.